Pastor Luke, man of God, Pastor Luke, man of God, man the Bible, it is true, Pastor Luke, man of God, man of God, Pastor Luke, man of God, man the Bible, it is true. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another hand clap this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for his blood that never loses his power. Amen. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm glad that God has blessed me to see another month. I'm glad that God looked over my faults and met me at my knees. I'm, I'm just excited that I get to come to church. I don't, I don't have to come to church, but I get to come to the house of the Lord to give him praise. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for that. There is a word from the Lord today that I want to deposit into your spirit. So if you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, if you would turn with me, Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. John 8, beginning at verse 31. Hallelujah. God is signified by saying, I got it. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Can somebody say amen? amen. I, I, I need you to help me preach this little sermon this, this morning. If you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I, need you to know I need you to know that above all things, above all things the, truth the truth doesn't change. Doesn't change. That was the wrong neighbor. I need you to turn to the neighbor and say, neighbor. Please hear, me Please hear me when I tell you these words. You these words. The, truth the truth doesn't change. Doesn't change. Come on, come on. Let's give God a hand clap of praise right there. The truth doesn't change. Yeah. You got to remember a lie because it changes on you. Yes, sir. But, but the truth, the truth don't change. So, but, but, but. The question is, which really could be a subtitle for a sermon, can you handle the truth? The truth about your work ethic. The truth about your relationships. The truth about how you handle money. The, the, the truth about your accountability. Your truth about your responsibility. Because if you can handle the truth, it's right here in the word of God because the truth don't change. Father God, we thank you today for another opportunity to come into your house to hear a word from you. We ask that you would bless us today. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive this word from you. Father God, I avail myself to your Holy Spirit. And I say, Holy Spirit, have your way in me. Let me decrease that your word, Lord God, may have complete control. Send your word out on assignment this morning. We decree and declare that that word shall not come back void. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Somebody shout, just tell me the truth. Just tell me. Hallelujah. Because the truth, truth doesn't change. There is a philosopher that quoted, we do not see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. Let me say that again. We uh, oftentimes when we see the world, we do not see the world as it is, but we see the world as we are. And the real danger is not, saints of God, in being wrong, but being completely unaware that you're wrong. Th there is a test that's conducted in psychology called the cognitive therapy. And it is the ability to step back from your thinking and to evaluate it objectively to determine if it's possible that your thinking has been distorted. Distorted by your old habits because this is the way that I've always done it. This is the way that I was raised to do it. And so now I believe that because it worked for me, it should work for everybody throughout perpetuity because it's the way that I was raised and this is the way that I know it's my tradition. So now, watch this, your tradition becomes the baseline for your truth. 
distorted, distorted maybe by my thinking because we are uh, finite beings. We're not infinite beings. We're finite beings, which means we're constantly learning. We're constantly growing and constantly developing. And since we are constantly developing and evolving, watch this, so does your definition of truth. And so now you don't think the same way at 65 you did at 15. Because your baseline for what you consider truth changes. Uh, I can't get no help in here this morning. Be, 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 because, be, be, because sometimes, w- w- watch this, we, we, we create in our mind what we think truth should be. And we make statements like, uh, it's 2019, you tripping, where you get that from? It's, we don't do that no more. But, but because times have changed, now anything is allowed. But I come to tell you this morning that truth don't change. Truth is God's view on any subject. Because God, watch this, saints, only functions in the realm of truth. Therefore, you need to understand, saints of God, hear me, that truth is fixed. It is a fixed standard, which means it does not change with your feelings. I knew I wasn't going to get many amens this morning. Truth is reality in its original state. And so then, saints of God, in order to discover truth, can I teach a little bit this morning? In order to discover truth, you must look for origin. And, and, and since God is the originator of all things, then God should, only, should be the only one, watch this, that's the standard for truth. Jesus says that, that, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I've come this morning to let you know that that truth still remains. That at the name of Jesus, that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. That, 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 that truth still remains. It, it still remains that no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That, that truth still remains. The, the truth still remains that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The problem is we have erased the standard. And because we have erased the standard now, truth is based on how we feel. A feeling that is also constantly changing. This is why saints of God, that, 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 that we must go back, watch this, to God's original intent. Before truth what was contaminated with the preservatives of man's own thoughts. <laughs> yeah, ooh, y'all, y'all mad uh, security. <laughs> the Bible is the book, watch this saints of God, of truth. Not just the book about truth, but the Bible is the book of truth. And it speaks about truth about 98 times in the New Testament. And about 99 times in the Old Testament. It lets you know that the word of God is infallible. That, that, that means that the word of God is not a mistake, that it's not, it's not wrong. The same word that he spoke in Genesis when he said, let there be, is the same word that's holding firm today. You might grow and you may elevate and you may be progressive in your thinking, but the word of God remains the same. That's why the old saints used to sing a song, now let us all go back to the old landmark. Back to a time that you didn't have to uh, 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 stroke people up to get them to praise God. Back to a time that you didn't have to say, but one time God is good. And everybody in the church would begin to stand up and give God praise. But we have become a society that's so progressive now that you got to give us a little bit more. We got to have a special preacher and sing a special song. If you want the crowd to come, you got to invite somebody from outside. But every now and then you have to go back to know the way forward. Because truth 
don't change. Huh. Facts. You, you, can, you can have facts and information and not have truth. Because your facts and your information can be manipulated to fit your position. Y'all don't like me this morning. You can have emotions and not have truth. Because you can be emotionally wrong. Oh, let, let, me, let me talk to somebody on this side over here. Have, have, you ever, have, have you ever sat up there and just cried about something? When you look back over your life, some things that you shed many tears about, but when you look at it today, you laugh at it and say, what was I thinking? Okay, y'all don't want to be real. Let me talk to this side over here. Have you ever just cut up about something that you just, you just cut up about something because you didn't want to let it go and now you look back on it and say, what in the world was I? Well, because at that point, could nobody tell you nothing because you had made up in your mind that what you were feeling was true. Ah, I come tell you, truth don't change. It, 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 does not, it does not change. And the Bible tells us in James chapter 1 verse 8 that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Because, because, because one day he living in truth and the next day he living in feelings. See, the enemy, unlike God, the enemy does not mind you being double-minded. Because... He, he, he doesn't mind sharing you because he don't really want you anyway. So he, he, don't, he don't mind you being double-minded. He don't mind you coming to church on Sunday screaming and saying, I have the victory as long as you retreat back in defeat by Monday. But I come to tell you that the truth don't change. I come this morning to preach a Monday, a Monday morning message to you. So when you wake up in the morning, you can remember that everything that God spoke over my life, the truth, it, 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 does, not, it, it, does, not, it does not change. And that's why your truth cannot just be head deep. It has to be heart deep. And David says, that word have I hid in my heart. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. That I will not sin against you because if... You just put it in your head, then your head can be manipulated for it. But when it's in your heart, you're willing to fight for it. Is there anybody in here that has a word down in your heart that no matter what that devil says, you're going to stand on that word because you know too much about God? Psalms 51 and 6 says, Behold, here it is, you desire truth in the inward parts. Ah, yeah. You, 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 you desire truth in the inward part. In, in other words, don't come, God says, don't come to me hiding how you really feel as if I can't see the truth. See, you, you, you can lie to Pastor Luke and I not know because I don't follow you home. I, I won't know because, because I can't see your heart. But God says, when you come to me, and you come praying to me. See, too often we pray because we want to sound good to God. We, we, we want to look good to God. So we get in a certain posture, but our heart's not right. And so we're asking God for something, but God is saying, listen, when you come to me, I need you to come to me real. Because those that worship me, must worship me in spirit and in because truth, truth don't change. So Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, I'm almost where I'm going because if y'all had some tomatoes, I, I don't know. Because when, whenever you start talking about truth, folk, 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 folk start, and I'm going to get to it in a minute, folk, folk, folk start getting real quiet. 
See, this is why Paul tells us in Ephesians 6, when Paul was telling us to put on the armor of God, that we may be able to stand against the wiles, against the tactics of the enemy. Watch what Paul says in Ephesians 6. Read it when you get home. The first thing that he tells you to put on was not have your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel. No. The first thing that he tells you to get is not the helmet of salvation. Uh Uh-uh. The first thing that he tells you to get is not the breastplate of righteousness. No. But the very first thing Paul says you got to have before you put on anything else is make sure you're girded with the belt of truth because truth is the only thing that's going to hold you up. I wish I had somebody here. I need to talk to somebody because it makes no sense. It makes no difference what it is you're building. If you don't build it on truth, it ain't going to hold up. If it's a relationship that's not built on truth, it's not going to make it. If it's a ministry that's not built on truth, it ain't going to survive. If it's a business that's not built on truth, it's not going to make it. God says the only way it's going to make it, here it is, is that it's built on truth. Somebody shout, just tell me the truth. Here it is. I'm going to give you three points. I'm going to let you go. Here it is because you're mean mugging me. (laughs) Here it is. Three things that you don't do with truth. Here it is. Here it is. The first thing that you don't do with truth is, watch this. Don't ignore it. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes we be quiet about things because, because, you know, we we, we don't want... uh, to tell the person the truth. And so uh, when you hear the truth, you, you, you ignore it. You, you automatically put it in this file because you make up in your mind, well, that's just the way. You can have the truth shown to you and you, and you will reason within yourself, well, that's just the way I am. Just look at your Bible. That's, that's just the way I have. That, that's, just, that's just me. you just going to have to deal with me. No, we, we, when you get truth, don't ignore it because we ignore what we don't want to face. Have you ever noticed people that when they get bills in the mail, they'll take the bill and put it on the table and won't even open it as if the bill going to change? They walk by the bill and they don't, I, I can't get no help in here. If, if I'm, listen, if I'm talking to you, just wink at me. You, everybody ain't got to know your business, but you don't even open the bill. The reason some folk won't go to financial classes, Pastor Liggins, is because they don't want to face the fact that if they don't change their spending habits, ain't nothing going to change. They just want to come to church and shout and run, and they want God to turn it around. But God said, I can't turn it around until you deal with truth. You know we don't want to face truth. And so here it is. You're telling your mate, we got to sit down and look at this money because money is being spent crazy. They don't want to look at the money. We don't, we don't want to look at the bills. I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy. What happy is based on what's happening. And ain't nothing happening until you deal with truth. I'm preaching better than you saying anything up in here today. Here it is. Here it is. People will ignore what they don't like. People will leave your church based on truth. People will leave relationships based on truth. People will walk away from counselors based on truth. I don't like that counselor. Why? Because they, I don't like what they said to me. Well, all they did was told the truth, but I don't like them. Let's find somebody else. And you keep searching. I'm stepping on some toes. I feel it. And you keep searching until you find somebody that agrees with your position. And then you say, I'll listen to them. But I come to tell you that the truth does not change. If you're black, if you're white, if you're rich or you're poor, the truth won't change. When, when, so you, you, you can't ignore the truth. You, 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 can't, you, 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 you can't ignore the truth. See, see, see here it is, here it is, saints. When you deal in truth, watch this principle. You take the enemy's mode of transportation. Because the enemy travels on the back of lies. When when you deal in truth, the enemy has nothing to move on. Because ain't no lies in this house. Ain't no lies in this house. Ain't no lies in this house. Come on, I <laughs> Ain't no lie. Hey, yeah, yeah. So, so when, when you, when you, when you deal in truth, you, you, I can't get no help in here. The enemy has nothing to move on. It can't go. I feel like I'm in the midst of some, some spiritual Uber drivers, because you picking up and dropping off lies, and not even know where you're going. 
you're saying stuff and you don't even know the facts behind it. Child, did you hear about this? No, I didn't hear about that. What did they say? Well, this is what I heard they said. Did they really say that? Yeah, child, that's what I heard. Child, did you not know that? They... And every time you start gossiping, the enemy attaches himself to that lie. And here we go again. But when you deal with truth, he ain't got nothing to ride. So, so somebody come to you and say, and say, what do you think about such and such? Uh, nothing. I don't think about it at all. When you shut it down, I wish I had somebody in here. When you shut that lie down, the enemy has no mode of transportation. And so God said, watch this, I'm almost where I'm going. So God said, listen, when I send you truth, don't ignore my truth. Because when you ignore God's truth, God will give you signs, signals, and situations. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. When God really wants you to grab truth, Elder Nichols, he'll give you signs, signals, and situations. If you ignore the signs... God says, get off right here. This is not for you. This is not what you, you, you wouldn't raise like this. This is not my plot for your life. You can't do it because everybody else doing it. Everybody came with you, can't go with you. I can't bless you. I'm showing you a sign. Exit, exit, exit right now. You turn as soon as you can. If you ignore the sign, God will give you a signal. Your energy level get low. You're having headaches and stomach aches. You can't keep no money in your pocket. Somebody said, tell the truth, Pastor. Tell the truth. He's giving you signals now. Eh? Won't nothing go right? When you take one step forward, you got to take two steps back. And you begin to say, God, I don't understand what's happening in my life. Well, why can't I prosper? Why is everybody around me being blessed? God says, I'm trying to give you a signal. And when you don't listen to the signal, you find yourself in a situation. I need somebody in here that's on the verge of a situation. I I need somebody to holler at your boy and say, Pastor, I I feel what you're talking about. Because I did not listen to the sign and I did not heed the signal. I found myself in a situation that I could have avoided if I would have listened to the truth. You don't love me. Yeah, I do. I I promise I love you. No, you don't love me. Why? Because you leaving? The least little thing I say, you leave. That means you don't love me. Well, I do love you. I just can't put up with all that. No, no, you don't love me then. Because because, uh, the truth don't change. And the Bible says that love bears all things, endures all things, believes all things. The Bible says love never fails. So don't say nothing if you don't mean it. I feel my help coming on. Is that what I got to do to wake you up in here? Somebody said, tell me the truth. Here it is. Here it is. God God, God says, watch this. Watch this. I'm almost done. He says, when I expose you to the truth, don't ignore it. (laughs) Listen, growing up in a Baptist church and and, and then also uh, 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 matriculating through uh, apostolic church and and, and, and then even going to uh, uh, the Church of God in Christ, visiting these churches. I, when I went to seminary, and, and I, I had questions. Because, because I, I'm, I'm studying God's word, and I've always been one, I just want to know the truth. And, and, and so I begin to ask questions of the word, and I begin to ask questions of my tradition. But tradition don't want you to ask questions. Tradition wants you to do it because that's what we've always done. Tradition said do it because I said do it. Why are we doing it this way? I don't know, but that's what we always done. Let's just keep doing it. Don't rock the boat. What did the Bible say? The hardest fight to fight is two of them. It's hard to fight somebody that said they love somebody else. Leave it alone because you would not. They, they would get mad at you because you trying to tell them that ain't love. How you going? You just mad because I ain't, you ain't got what I got. That's the first one. The second thing is, the hardest fight to fight is the fight against tradition. Because people are die for what they believe to be true with no confirmation from God. (laughs) 
So now you got your 12-year-old daughter out there playing softball in a blue jean miniskirt. Because you believe that if she put on pants, she going to hell. Where that at in the Bible? I got to talk to it just like it is. Because God's people perish for lack of knowledge. So now watch this. So, so, so now watch this. You're judging somebody's sanctification on how they dress. You're judging their sanctification and their relationship with God with what they say. But if you follow them home, you'll see a totally different person. And so now we've run people off church because we've ignored truth. Now folks don't want to come to church because they, they say something silly like, I can't fit in. But we have created an environment to make people feel like they can't fit in. And, 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 and watch this. And, and watch this. Not only have we done that, but we've created an environment where people can't be real. They got to be fake. Because if they told you what they were really struggling with, you would judge them. And so they have to come into church and they have to be fake and they have to act like they're receiving the word and they have to act like everything is good and they know the buzzwords to say and they know when to stand up and they know when to wave their hand because they got to do this for you. But God said, I'm looking at your heart. And when I give you the truth, don't ignore it. Second thing is, when God gives you truth, don't be intimidated by it. <laughs> some, some folk don't want to see the truth because, watch this, I promise you I'm almost where I'm going. Give me about five more Baptist minutes. Here it is. <laughs> don't be intimidated by it. Because the truth, it, it reveals. The truth uncovers. The truth exposes. And so people are intimidated by truth because I don't want nobody to know my business. And so they, they become intimidated by it. And, and, and so, well, watch this, so they cover it up. It, 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 but but, but what, what the truth does is it, it, oh, here it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It removes the makeup. And it forces you to look at what it really is. And you put makeup on it because you don't like the way it looks. <laughs> oh, I got to. I got to you, you put makeup on it because you don't like the way it looks. And so God said, I'm going to take the makeup off so you can see exactly what it is you're working in. It's time to take the makeup off the church and, 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 and uncover some things because it's not going to change until you accept the truth. And many people are intimidated by the truth because the truth intimidates them. And they say, listen, because the truth makes me look at myself. I can't hide myself. I, I got to, listen, I'm, I'm looking at me now. I'm looking in this mirror. And, and, and when I look in this mirror, I'm seeing my flaws and I'm seeing stuff I don't want other people to see. And so I don't fix it, I cover it up. Because I want to look good to people. But this thing that I'm covering up is killing me. And I come to church and I can't get help because I come to church with it covered up. But I've come to tell you, truth don't change. And whatever the enemy sees that you're intimidated by, watch this, he will use to manipulate your life. You, you, you remember when Jesus was in the wilderness and, and, and Satan was tempting him in the wilderness with lies. And every time Satan hit him with a lie, Jesus hit him with the truth. So, 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 whenever he came to Jesus with something, Jesus says, I hear what you're saying, but the Bible says. The word says, see, I come to tell somebody in here that don't be intimidated by the truth. Because whenever, whenever the enemy tries to hit you with a lie, hit him with the truth. Tell him, I hear what you're saying, but God said. I know I'm broke right now, but God said this. I know I'm sick right now, but God said that by his stripes I'm healed. I know I'm lonely right now, but God says that he's going to walk with me and talk with me. The only way you're going to fight that enemy's lies is with the truth. Somebody say the truth. Don't change. And so here it is. Here it is. You, you, you have to learn to stand bold. 
with the truth. One of the things my wife and I are working on with our daughter is our daughter, uh, whenever we go to a restaurant, uh, we're flying on a plane and there's a, uh, a stewardess or there's a waiter. Well, watch this. She, she's, she's, she's shy when it comes to talking to them. Now, she'll talk all up in here and all at the house. She'll, she'll, she'll talk, but whenever the waiter come and said, what can I do for you? She didn't want to say anything. So my wife and I are telling her, listen, listen, you, you, you got to speak up. Speak up for yourself. But she prefer her mother, watch this, or her father says it for her. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm sitting her there saying, baby, you know how to talk. We have equipped you with everything you need, watch this, to tell them what you want. Come here. Come here. Some of you are intimidated by truth. But, and and then you, you say, well, uh, I got to get the pastor to pray for me. I need a deacon to pray for me. I need somebody. But God says, listen, I've already given. The Holy Spirit that's in him is the same Holy Spirit that's living in you. So when I speak to him, I can speak to you too. You can declare over your house, my house is covered. You can declare over your own child that my child shall live and not die. You can put your hand on yourself and say my body is healed. You can cover your own marriage. God says, if the enemy can get you to be intimidated by it, then you will run from it. Here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Don't ignore the truth. Don't be intimidated by the truth. Last point is, watch this, don't incarcerate the truth. Don't lock it up. God help me in here. Don't, don't hide it. God is a provider. God is a protector. But you are a proclaimer. And when God has done something for you, you have to proclaim that truth. You got to tell somebody about what God has done for you. Don't incarcerate your truth because you don't want nobody to judge you or you don't want nobody to look down their nose at you. You got to say something. You got to say it if they don't want to hear it. You got to say it if they wish you would stop talking about it. If don't nobody else on your road give God praise for what he's done, you ought to give God praise. You got to give your testimony. You got to tell your story. Don't just sit there with everything God has done for you and not say anything about it. You putting handcuffs on your truth. Because there are some people that will not believe the truth unless they hear you as a witness. There are some people that they're not going to believe what the preacher said. They want to hear it from somebody that's sitting beside them. That's why you got to give your testimony, honey. You got to tell somebody, I had to raise these kids by myself. I, I, I know what it's like to eat out the garbage can. and I know what it's like to not be able to pay your rent. Tell somebody. When you get to the house of God... If God can't depend on but one person to shout, let it be your shout that he hear. If he can't depend on but one person to give him praise, let it be your praise that he hear. Is there anybody in here that's not ashamed to give God praise for what he's done in your life? Would you take about two seconds and give God a shout in here like I know he did it for me? Here it is. Here it is, I'm done. I'm done. Here it is, Napoleon, I'm, I'm, I'm done. The most difficult thing that I ever had to do in my life was listen to the truth. Listen to the truth. Most difficult thing I had to do in my life. Here I am, a college graduate, master's degree in theology, heading towards my doctorate in theology. Ms. Allen is in the audience when I'm getting my dark ready. She's clapping her hands. I'm so proud of you. And I thought I knew what God wanted me to do. And I had people come and prophesy things in my life. But it didn't line up with my five-year plan. And I didn't want to hear the truth. And there were certain things that God was telling me to fix in my life. And I didn't fix it because I covered it up with my education. And so if you come to me with it, I can debate you on anything. Let's talk about it. I can debate you to the point that you will get tired or you will acquiesce. <laughs> and so what I did is I covered everything up. But God has a way. 
of snatching the covers. <sighs> He'll give you time to get up yourself. But if you don't get up when he rings the alarm, God will snatch the covers. And when he snatched the covers, and I began to question him by looking in the mirror saying, God, I don't understand this, man. I ain't going to church no more. But stop going to church. I'm not reading my Bible. I'm done. I'm done. How could this happen to me? I'm over here. I'm executive pastor in the church. I'm, I'm teaching people on Tuesday night. I'm teaching people on Wednesday night. Every time the door church, the church door open, I'm there. I'm teaching. Elder Nichols can tell you every time the church was over, y'all going home. I'm still there teaching people in after school church. Getting home 9 o'clock at night, not able to sleep. The next morning, I got to get up and go to church again. Surely I paid my dues and I shouldn't go through this. But no matter how much you serve or how much Bible you think you know, if you don't let God deal with that truth issue in your life. So he snatched the covers off. Now I'm looking in the mirror. Degrees can't help you when you're looking in the mirror. The money you got in the bank can't do nothing for you when you're looking in the mirror. I wish I had some more folk that had been in the mirror like that. You, 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 you talking to the man in the mirror. And you asking him to change his ways. Come on, Michael, help me. Because I can't get no help in here. You're looking in the mirror. And, and, and you can't be fake no more. So now you just have to do what God told you to do. And God will take everything away. Until you make up in your mind, I'm going to deal with the truth. Saints of God, I'm done. Stand here, everyone, everyone standing. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. The battle that we are waging war in, saints, hear me, is the battle against the truth and a lie. There is no middle ground. There is no gray area. There, there, there is no little white or black lie. There, there, there are no categories. I'm not, I'm not as bad as this person, so I'm okay. God says, yeah, but you know the truth. And he says that if you abide in my word, you are my disciple. And the truth won't set you free. It'll make you free. But God says... He wants the truth, the whole truth. Thank you, Zena. I, I thank you for helping me preach my message today. And nothing but the truth. And if you want to move forward from where you are, if you want to see real reformation, you want to see real change, then whatever that it is, whatever that thing is that you've not been truthful about, God said in this season, now I, I let you come through half of the year with it, but before this year ends, I need for you to deal with that thing because I'm taking the paint off. And you're going to have to either fix it or watch it die. I know that's a bit of pill. But, but, but I love you too much to lie to you. I can't see you walking around looking cute, but wounded underneath. I can't let you continue to walk around looking like a million bucks, but can't even put gas in your car. I, I, I can't let you continue to walk around with all of this, all of this God wants to do in you and you giving it away. Can't let you just keep having church and you're living beneath God's design for your life. I want every head bowed in this place. Heavenly Father God, we, we come before you now, all of us admitting that we're flawed in some way, that there are no perfect people. We come, Lord God, repenting if we've leaned to our own understanding. We've leaned, Lord God, to our own tradition, our upbringing what we thought without bringing it to you and we ask father god now that you would help us to see truth be aware of truth 
and help us to walk in truth. It is no longer our desire, Lord God, to cover up things that we know are not pleasing to you. Cover up things that we know, Lord God, are damaging our life, our home, our finances, our mind, our marriage, our progress, our ministry. Father God, we give you permission by the power of the Holy Spirit to change us in the inward parts that our outward man may be renewed. Father, we ask that you would come into our hearts this day bring truth into our lives that our lives may be changed thereby. We'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. Man of God, pass, pass, the Lord. Man of God, pass, the Lord.